Welcome back everyone, it's me Matsmas. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are discussing military aviation once again and a rather fascinating fighter jet that lots of you have been asking for many many times in the past. We are going to go over an overview and a miniature review of this aircraft. One reminder for you all before I go ahead, this is definitely a video where I'm not in my comfort zone and I'm not a subject matter expert by any means so please take anything that I give to you in this video purely for informative purposes, not educational, so I don't get anything wrong. And as I said, I don't know everything about this aircraft or anything about military aviation in general uh, that I can claim to say that I know everything about. So if I make any mistakes, I do apologize. So as you can see by this beautiful looking aircraft, this is the Sukhoi Su-57. Now the aircraft really has been seen all over the world uh, by many different people, of course. It does have a prestigious looking profile to it for sure uh, because a lot of people have been confused about what exactly is this jet and I myself am definitely one of those people. I have no clue what this jet does and how it's come to be and I've always been fascinated too so it's time to start talking about it. So the aircraft really stuns us with its beauty first of all but also its controversy. The aircraft has a very interesting history and a very interesting future. Now politics aside which clearly I'm not allowed to talk about I have to say this jet has had some really rocky roads and is always under the what if spotlight. It did start life as the PAC FA or Future Frontline Aircraft System and has been under the microscope ever since. Claims of stealth technology were announced and the Russian defense community have basically stuck to that for quite some time. Now of course the F-35 fans will say that this jet is nothing compared to it and that it's truly not a stealth aircraft but we really don't know huge amounts about this aircraft and as with any high tech fighter in development it's very hush hush about the true facts and figures and statements that this aircraft is actually producing. However, originally it was thought that the Pak fa was an air superiority fighter. However it turned out that this aircraft is also quite a secondary ground attack capability with it too. The new stealthy claimed aircraft was supposed to be aimed at replacing the amazing, in my personal opinion, yet aging MiG-29 fleet and Su-27 fighters, which I've done videos on in the past so feel free to go check them out. Some of the military defense community also claim that this is the Russian fighter's answer to the gorgeous F-22 Raptor, which again I have done a video on. Development of this aircraft commenced in 2001 and is classified as a Russian 5th generation fighter, however many people say it is a 4th, which boasts some high tech aviation tech such as radar absorbing material and weaponry to provide some pretty impressive performance and agility to the Russian fighter fleet. The first showing of this aircraft was during the MAX Air Show, which is just outside of Moscow, and of course it had many heads turning as to what this jet was capable of. In 2014, a pre-production prototype was delivered to the Russian Air Force for trials and evaluation. The T-50 is primarily the name for only prototypes of the Su-57s, and its purpose initially was seen as an air superiority fighter with the focus on aerial recon and some small bombing missions if needed. It was planned that this fighter aircraft would enter service in 2017 to 2018 and should have reached full operational capability by 2020. However, in 2017, some official sources reported that the aircraft was not ready for full-scale production and some serious concerns began when India, its partner and development of production of this fighter, pulled out of the bidding and program completely. The jet was inherently very expensive and like any other jet trying to make history with new tech features, it had bugs that needed to be fixed. Most likely, the setbacks were some related to high technical issues, incomplete development of some of its core systems, such as engines, new missiles and electronics, as well as some severe funding problems. In 2017, the Pak fa received a regular designation as the Su-57. The Russian Air Force has a requirement of up to 150 to 200 of these new multi-role fighters. Meanwhile though, the Russian Air Force actually ordered the Su-35 multi-role fighters as an interim measure, until the Su-57 stealthy fighter became available. By 2018, at least nine Su-57 aircraft were built, including prototypes and pre-production fighters. Many debate the jet's true capabilities, and it's really hard to say what it is capable of because it is so strewn in secrecy, just like any other high-tech fighter that has been produced for countries around the world. But the Su-57 definitely has reduced radar cross-section and a number of other improvements over the current Su-35 multi-role fighters and some of the older generations, and we have to commend Russia's capability in doing so. Development of this aircraft has been partially funded by India, which I mentioned, which was also planned to acquire up to around 250 of these next generation fighters, known as the HAL or HAL FGFA 5th generation fighter aircraft. 
However, the Indian version would have had a twin seat configuration and other smaller features to tie into the navigation system that India wished to have in its own aircraft. The layout of the jet is fairly straightforward, however it is extremely Russian design at its core. When you look at it in some angles though, it's hard to say that it looks like an F-22 and an Su-35 had a baby together. The jet is full of sharp angles and crisp lines with those huge engines at the back pushing some serious thrust. It is the single seat aircraft just like the F-22 and that's where you truly see its similarity at the front to the F-35 and F-22 jets from the United States. The Su-57 uses stealth shaping to deflect radar waves, however there is severe speculation of the radar deterring effects this jet is capable of. Without making a fool of myself, I will not focus on the stealth aspects of this jet for two reasons. One, I am not very up on my stealth technology knowledge, and two, most of us are mainly just speculating anyway, so it doesn't really matter where I get my information from, things can be really blurry anyway. However, some features are obvious in ridding its radar signature, such as weapons stored in internal weapons bay, and that do not compromise that of the stealthiness to the aircraft's radar signature. Overall, it's less visible to radars, and then definitely less visible to radars than its predecessors of Russian fighter fleet. The engines are spaced purposely wide apart to allow for the large weapons internal bays, and also provide amazing thrust vectoring for maximum agility when flying. The Russian fighter uses two Saturn 117S's AL41F1S engines, producing a thrust of around, claimed, 33,050 pounds of thrust each. And if they were to produce afterburning effects, that's up to around 40,000 pounds, again speculated numbers. The same engines are actually used on the Su-35S's as a multi-role fighter, however there's been speculation of upgrades to the engines to produce even more power. Exact specifications of the new engines are unknown. Some sources claim that it is capable of flying at supersonic speeds without using afterburners, even at low altitude. Two large 10-point internal weapon bays are mounted in tandem between the engines, which are complemented by six external hardpoints. There's also two side bays for short-range air-to-air missiles. It is believed that this aircraft can carry up to seven hardpoints of 500 kilograms worth of ordnance. The jet is capable of carrying one or two of the GSH-301 cannons, which is a 30mm gun capable of firing around 1500 rounds per minute. Overall, this jet has massive payload capacity for what it needs and can do some serious damage with the formidable weapons that accompany it. Stand by for the list. There is the R-74M Western reporting name Archer missile of the R-77M Adder air-to-air -air missiles, the KH-38M air-to-surface missile, the KH-31AD and KH-35U AS-20 kayak anti-ship missiles, the KH-31PD and KH-58USHK anti-radiation missiles, the CAB-250, the CAB-500 and the CAB-1500 guided bombs, to name just a few. The jet is also able to carry the BrahMos air-launched cruise missile, but this is yet to be fully confirmed. The jet has a claimed speed of around 1700 miles per hour, but not confirmed, and a full flight ceiling unloaded at 65,000 feet. The jet is shrouded in questions and speculations in my eyes, and still has one of the most sexy looks of any modern day fighter. Regardless of the concerns to its legitimate stealth capabilities, I think it has some pretty interesting features that are stepping away from the classic mid-29-35-esque fighters. The internal weapons bays alone are really making this aircraft something stepping away from the traditional standardized designs of those aircraft, and to me that's pretty cool. I must admit I'm enjoying the fact that these aircraft also have thrust vectoring, and they're just going for that more sleek approach. It's really difficult to say how this aircraft's going to compete and compare to some of the more modern day fighters out there and whether or not it really is a fifth generation fighter. It's safe to say though that Russia is in somewhat stepping out of the boundaries a little when it comes to going into the new world of fifth generation fighters and that's really cool to see. I must admit I would like to see this aircraft in high end production but I don't think we're ever going to for the fact that unfortunately there's a lot more to it than just building an aircraft. There's contracts, there's money, there's politics, and as we know with the F-35, it's the exact same thing. Tons and tons of things have to go right for it actually to be fully produced. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video about this beautiful fighter, the Su-57. And please make sure you feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel with the little bell button so you can be notified. I am going to be uh, doing a lot more videos in terms of live streaming on Twitch. So if you want to interact with me, come chat, hang out. Make sure you go to the description box below and check out all the social media profiles, including Twitch. Where you can actually come hang out with me on live stream and have a chat. If you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon account. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, make sure you hit me up on there too. 
Folks, I also have a merchandise store if you want to check out some of my merch. You're more than welcome to. And thank you to everyone who's been supporting me both on Patreon and in my merchandise store. It really is appreciated. As we see this beautiful fighter jet land, I'm going to say goodbye. All the best, folks. Bye-bye.